Oh, all right. It looks like my connection is not as strong as I hope it is. If this cuts, you will have to forgive me. If it cuts, you'll have to forgive me. Hopefully it goes on. Um, I usually do not, hang on, we're telling your followers. I usually do not like going live because this thing never, never saves any of my videos. Yeah, the reason why I don't like to go live a lot is because I don't, I don't think this thing likes the way that I flow. It doesn't flow the way that I like to flow. Nevertheless, I'm going to try this session today. Let's hope that it goes according to plan. If you can't hear me, please just give me feedback below to say that you can't hear what I'm trying to say. Hopefully you can. I'm going to try and speak as loud as I can. I am still carrying on with my God series. Remember, I've started a series on my profile. If you have been following any of my posts to say that you are gods. So in this interaction now, hopefully most of you, if you do jump in, either you watch it live now or later on, Guys, I need your feedback. I need to actually understand your meaning of what, what the word I have released now concerning you being a God, how you have tried to integrate it into your life in any way, what your successes have been, what your failures have been, what your feedback has been like. I really would love to engage to Terene Rodoscoprandia to get deeper into this conversation about your Godness, your godly state, your level of Godness. Let me put it like that. I want to know how deep have you gone? There's actually a spirit trying to resist me with this word. I can feel it coming from this direction. That's why I went into tongues right now. Um, by the way, I have posted something on my online media concerning tongues again. And I think for us going forward, particularly concerning the word I'm releasing now about us being gods and moving as, as gods. So I'm just putting my charger back on. Um, I, I need you guys to do this according to the Spirit, which means I need the Holy Spirit to actually help. I, I know I'm trying to limit how religious I become when I'm releasing this word. I actually almost want this word to transcend religions, personally. I would love for that to, to be the case. However, concerning the revelation I have about God himself, and how the spirit flows. I have to, I have to, I have to engage with the Holy Spirit. I actually have to. It's just something that God has, has instructed me to do for now. Perhaps going forward, when you guys actually understand fully what it means to be a God and how moving as God actually, how, how, that, how, that, uh, how that word interacts with you. Until you are comfortable with that, I, I won't be able to flow with you until I have giving you the word concerning the Holy Spirit and how the Holy Spirit actually helps you or intercedes on your behalf or gives you the revelation to be like God. Because the Holy Spirit himself comes from God, which means that he shows you the mysteries of God. That's the Holy Spirit. That's actually one of his main functions. And that's why I posted on my, on my, on my timeline, on my feed, the thing about speaking in the Spirit or praying in tongues. That is actually a necessary state if we want to go as deep as I'm hoping or I have seen myself going. I've only received or gone to these depths with the Spirit of God. He has shown me these things that I'm talking to you about now or that I hope to speak to you going further, going forward. So please, guys, I don't want to be too religious about this. I'm actually more spiritual than religious. That's why I'm hoping that you have an encounter with the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit himself will confirm everything that I tell you concerning your God nature. He actually reveals it to you. He actually instructs you as to how you yourself are supposed to move in, the, in your God state according to what God has put inside of you. He reveals it to you. So us being God, that's why the, the, the word is that he's, he's, he's the son, we are the sons of God or he's the God of gods. I know the scripture doesn't, doesn't necessarily put it in that way, but that's how I want to define it. He's the God of gods, which means that he himself was God and he gave birth to sons who are God themselves. Which means that there is no difference. But you as a God, each God is different because we are gods, yes, in general, plural, gods, all of us together, but our functions are different. So one of the posts that I had put is that I described Jesus as God and I also put Paul as God, even though if you speak to Paul in the spirit, because I've done that, I know he's no longer on the earth, but I've, I have connected with people's spirits. Whoever, let me put it like this. 
and how this word functions. And now I'm gonna have to bring the Bible a little bit. Please, before you switch off to say, this guy is just, is just trying to preach to me. I just want you to, for the next guy, I just want to contextualize the word I'm releasing now. So many of the revelations I have received have been from scriptures. Many of the truer revelations as to the, the revelation behind the revelation I have learned in the spirit. So the word itself, the scriptures themselves have given me intuition, have given me intuition and insight into what it means to be a God and what, what the basis is of being a God is like. I have used scriptures. So I'm not going to lie to you to say that this is now just general, that I've learned everything. I have used the Bible many a time. And the reason why I'm, I'm bringing up names from the scriptures now is so that I can give you context so that you can read up on these people because they, their stories have been written up already. And that's the great thing about the Bible. It puts things into context. These things have happened. People recorded them happening. And that's the revelation that they have received when they were writing to say, this is how we perceive God to be with us in, in the way that he has presented himself to us, in the way that the light, his light has come to us. This is how we have seen it. Even I now, I could actually, if I wanted to, I could have been a, a source if God had wanted me. Let me rather put it like that. I could have been a source to have written scriptures. To say that you have seen me in a certain way. I have shown you certain things. Write this down on my behalf so that other people can learn. But this, what I'm actually interacting with you now, this is almost like a modern day version of what scriptures would have been like back then. Remember back then in, when they were writing the scriptures, they didn't have these functions now, what we have now. So their best form of interpreting and sharing with other people would have been to write it down. Great. That's why it's written. I now have this function in front of me that I can now use electricity, the media, internet, Wi-Fi, all of these things to now, in that same light that they were writing down the scriptures to say, I have spoken to God. This is what God is saying. I'm using that same type of mindset now with the current form of medium to get to you to say that I have heard from God, this is what he's saying in the spirit. And the current word that is put inside of me is that I am a son of God. Me being a son of God means I and God are one. Our natures are one. Yes, looking at me, you can see, you see my flesh. You're seeing my body, you see my mouth moving, hearing my words speaking. So you're hearing the man speak. Nevertheless, behind this man that you're hearing speaking is a God. I want you to understand the revelation so that you can pick it up for yourself to say, what does this man mean when he says, I am the image and likeness of God? Why does he want me to interact with this word to say that I am a God? Why? And that's actually where I want now this live version, this is the show, I need to inquire of the Spirit. <laughs> I need to inquire of the Spirit. So I'm going to pray with the I'm not even praying. I'm going to speak to the Spirit because the Spirit is speaking to me in His language and I understand tongues. That's how I speak with the Spirit in tongues. And then He gives me the interpretation so that I can interpret back to you in your language now, which right now is English. Because English in itself is a tongue. It's a language that we use as a, as a way of communicating. But the, the, the reason I don't like it is it's very natural. It's too natural, actually. Um, not to say that you cannot speak to God in English, by the way. Actually, you cannot because God speaks to you with your heart. So even though you're, let's say you go to God and you're trying to have a conversation with him in English, this tongue here that you have learned on earth through people, through your schooling, through books, whatever, you can speak to God in that language because he understands all languages, by the way, he's God. Not to say that he created English because I know English when, in terms of the way we speak it now, it comes from Anglo-Saxon and it also comes from other languages that have been mixed together. And they have kind of put it all together to say, okay, this is now the current form of English that we speak now. Remember, there's old English and then there's the English that we speak now. It's not the same. Though the basis are the functions and the basis and the meanings of the words and how they derive it are quite similar. The origin of the language in itself, where you don't even really know where it really truly comes from. But we can we kind of have seen over the years how it's been kind of created and things have been added on to it and kind of seen how they have actually developed the language in itself, English. So that's the language most of us speak here. Renez, it's, it's, it's an official language in many countries. Obviously, I know in other countries there's French or there's uh, is it Mongolian. What is a language that is quite pro predominant in the, in the north, in the Asian region? I forgot what the name is, but apparently that's the most spoken language. But I think that's just based on populace because there's so many of those people that there's more of them speaking that language. Nevertheless, languages themselves, whatever language you come from, whatever tribes you come from, like here in South Africa, the Zulus, the Kosas, the Tswanas, the Watwat, 
all of you as a function of what you have come from in terms of your tribes, your your Karenaska, your generations that have come before you and the language that they have spoken and have developed, you can still speak to God in that language. So to say that a man speaking Zulu, a man speaking Sotho, Afrikaans and English speaking to God can still speak the same God. And he can still interpret those languages and he can still refer back to them in that language that they're speaking. That is very possible. However, 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 and I might should speak a little bit about ancestors going forward as well. However, Erenaska Brandia, my spirit man, I can feel him now, he is elevating. So even though I'm speaking to you in, 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 in the natural, my spirit around me, that's why you actually need to speak in the spirit, by the way, and why you need to develop your spirit man. You can only discern these things by the spirit. That's why I pray in the spirit, because the spirit is interacting with me and exposing the things that are around me, which are spiritual. Hence the reason for tongues, because tongues are not something that you learn in the natural. A spirit or the spirit teaches you or gives you the utterance as to say that this is what's going on around you. That's why tongues are very important, guys. And that's why actually the devil does not want you to speak in tongues. It's not him, because that is that is a perception. Can I ask God, God wants me to flow, actually. It is not him that is giving you tongues, the devil. Because many people now, they say that the tongues are, de- they are tongues of the devil. By the way, I have heard them, I have interpreted them, and I know what they sound like, and I even know the people who do pray them. And some big churches and big ministries actually do speak tongues of the devil. So they are there. Nevertheless, within the language of tongues, there's actually tongues of the Spirit of God as well. So you yourself need to practice discernment to say, the language I'm about to speak now, is it from God or is it from the devil? And think about this in this way. If you're asking God, assuming that you believe in who God is, if you're asking God for the gift to say, Father, if this is your gift, put it inside of me that I may know or get the revelation of what it is that you have you have asked for me to know concerning this language. He, your Father in spirit, will give you that which is good. Remember, only God is good. The Messiah said that only God is good, which means if you're asking from a good Father to give you a gift which you believe is from Him, how then would you give you a snake or a curse or a serpent in return for something that you are asking that he may give you something that is good from him. I will return to that word concerning tongues. I don't want to, this, this is not about tongues. Even though it is something that you guys, I would love for you to do it. This is about your God state. Please, if you have an, any any questions concerning what I have released, you can type them there and I'll try and answer to you. I would love, to, I would love for this to be interactive. But I want to know what, what to you, what does it mean to be a God? I'm going to start from my own perception because obviously I, I can only speak from what I have seen, what I've, I have encountered in the spiritual realm, what it means to be a God and what it means to be a son of God. And that's, where I, that's why I have started to say, what does it mean to be a God? And that's why I gave you the exercise, if you watch my previous video, to say, sit in the place of God, the one who has created all things around him, why he created all things and how it is that he created all things see things from his point of view to say okay this is the world i'm about to create this is how i'm going to create it and this is why i am going to create it when you sit on the throne of god seeing things according to his perspective your understanding of who god is can then translate more and further to what your understanding or what your perception is supposed to be concerning the god you are supposed to be in terms of what he has put inside of you spiritually and individually because when you interact with god one-on-one and i have done that by the way i'm not trying to brag but it's something that i have done i wouldn't be speaking these things unless i've done that i have spoken to god one-on-one face to face (laughs) take that any way that you want to and he has given me certain revelations about himself and he's also given me revelations in terms of what kind of god he wants me to be Likewise, when you find who God is in the spirit and you speak with him and you have a conversation with him, he can also now show you what kind of God he wants you to be in terms of what functions he has put inside of you. I know this, even I speaking the way that I'm speaking, I'm almost uncomfortable to say it in those terms because we are not taught to be like God. We are not taught to equal ourselves to God. God is up there. We are down here whatever he says goes and we're just supposed to listen but the bible does not put it like that even the very foundation of scripture does not put it like that to say you are in his image in his likeness 
He has put his function inside of you, which means A, you look like God, B, you sound like God, C, you walk like God. To say that when you activate your spiritual level of who God is in the spirit, everything around you actually sees you as God. Do you know that? Reneske Frandia, um, I don't even know if I should repeat that or not because that is just too deep. But when you put on your God function, everything around you sees you the way that... Uh, the way that God is seen. Oh, I, I don't even know how to describe it to you guys. I honestly do not. Unless you yourself should do it to say that, you know what? Let me move with this word. If I am wrong to say that perhaps I'm stretching the truth, because I mean, the scriptures on God are very few and far in between. If you, read the, if you have read the scriptures, I, I haven't read any other source yet. Maybe there's somebody else who's given some great revelations of who God is and how working as a God actually functions and how it works. I don't know. I'll find that person sometime in the future. Maybe that person is even me. Maybe I'm supposed to write those things. But right now, to say that God has put certain functions inside of you that are like his. One of those is kingship. One of these is rulership. So the Bible does speak a lot. Sorry, going back to scriptures. Does speak a lot about authority. You have authority. Does speak a lot about kingship. Does speak a lot about rulership. Does speak a lot about righteousness and you moving in righteousness and in the right way of things. So it speaks a lot about that in terms of aligning you to the function of what you are in the spiritual realm. So it, it alludes a lot to those things functionally. Only a few scriptures actually go on and put it to say that you actually are God and you look like God and you function like God. Very few scriptures actually directly link it to say that you are a son of God and you look like God. Even though it does actually put it further on to say that you, you are supposed to be born again and you're supposed to be like a red and there. You're supposed to have the adoption of sonship. to say that you are a son of God, you are a child of God. Many of us like to put it in the terms that you are a child of God. But even when you put it in those terms that you are a child of God, you almost diminish, diminishing the function of it because a child is not at a place of inheritance of what he is as an adult. So when you put it in the function to say you are a child of God, you're almost putting it in to say that you are supposed to be a child forever. No, we're saying that you are a child of God to say that you have the nature of God inside of you. But it is not to say that you're supposed to now function as a child throughout that child is supposed to mature into the things of God to say that eventually when you mature to be godly enough, you will be in a place to function as if you're God himself. Wow! <laughs> you can throw stones at me if you want, that's okay. Or you can just, just jump off my life and say, you know what, this guy's crazy. But that is the function of who you're supposed to be. You're supposed to function as God himself. You're supposed to function as God Himself. Further is a man, Radia. Hey, Father, please help me on this one. God would not would not put Himself inside of you except that He realized your ability to function with those things that he has put inside of you to function with the revelation of who God is that he has put inside. Remember, we are the only ones on earth, by the way. When he created in the beginning to say, let us make man in our image, in our image and likeness. No other creature on this earth was given that function, given that ability, except you. So you already just being a man, already functionally are in the image and likeness of God. The authority you already have, even if you're in the end, you're a natural man and you move according to your natural Arenasa Prandia Rada, what 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 is what is the word I'm looking for? Uh your your natural predispositions. Even in that function as a man, you are still moving or relating to God Himself. Do you know that? To say that the way that you walk in, the way that you're thinking, the how how you even think, how you even process thoughts those thoughts themselves are from God. So even in your natural state, before you even knew who God was, you were already operating in a God-like form to say that whatever you think to do, you have the ability to do it. Obviously, that comes with limitations in terms of what you can access to do that particular thing, whatever you need, the resources and whatnot. But to say if you had, if you don't have the resources, you can create the resources. And if the resources are there, then you can use those resources to Put that function or that vision that is inside of you to bring it to pass. You actually bring things to life. You bring things to light. 
that is part of the function of God to say he thought of a thing and he made it and he brought it to pass. This is now speaking about creation. I'm not going to necessarily go into the creation, the creative side, even though God does say I will need to speak about it at some point or another. But right now, I'm not going to necessarily go to the point of you actually creating, because in essence, that's what a God does. He creates. He creates. Or he destroys <laughs> i don't want to speak about the destructive side of god because i have seen it and it's it's something else it can be beautiful it can also be very ugly at the same time but let's say that you can create you know the way god is putting it this way i actually almost don't even want to go in this direction um because now that that might just go into the function of you're being too far-fetched but i'm going to say it the way that i'm hearing it and then Embrade Reda Saprande, he actually almost wants you to go, not even almost, he actually literally wants you to go to a place Arande Reda Soprandia, Shamprana Reda Zedong Rodo Soprandia, sorry, Arase Prondo, is this thing gonna be able to reconnect? Ah, Tembrodo Sembradia do Credo Renere de Frendora, Arde Brandere do Soprandia. Apologies, I received a message. Um, I was I was ministering to, um, and maybe let me let me move on from. Ah, uh, Charenda, my video is pausing. <laughs> I don't know what's going on, but my my is anybody still around? Am I speaking to myself? Let me just wave back to see if anybody is actually still there or not, because I may end up just speaking to myself here. Um. Okay, I'm going to carry on. Um, if no one is listening, then I'll just minister to myself. The person who actually just blocked my live video is somebody that I was ministering to earlier. And she actually gave me feedback, by the way. Uh, only one, because I posted to say, I challenge you to say, what has been your experience like as a God? Or what is your perception on this word to say that you are God or you are like God or you can function as a God? And she actually gave me feedback. It's a lady. She gave me feedback to say one of the things or one of the things she perceives about God is that he acts in a functional way. He doesn't act according to his emotions. He doesn't act according to feelings. He acts in a way that he knows he's going to develop something from it or he sees the future of the things that he's about to do. And that is very important because I did speak about wisdom on one of my videos. There's a spirit that's coming from me from this side. I can sense there's a spirit here. Here, around here. There's a spirit that's hovering around me from the back. Obviously, you can't see it, but if you watch me long enough, you'll be able to discern that there are things happening around me. So there are spirits moving around me. Even the weather is doing its own thing. It was raining a bit earlier on. It's actually quite heavy. The spirit is actually quite heavy around me. And that is one of the functions of being a god. You carry weight. You carry weight. Um, in essence, let me put it in this way. Right now, as we are moving, we're actually moving inside God. Or we are moving inside the creation of God. So in essence, technically, we're moving inside God himself. Which means it is Amrade Saprando. Woo! <laughs> My God. Anyway, mm, you know when I go in the spirit, it gets a bit weird but exciting at the same time. Anyway. So we are moving in the functions of God himself. The laws that we're operating he around here on earth are the laws that he has put to say, okay, this is what a man looks like. This is how he's going to develop. He's going to have this. He's going to have this, the eyes, the nose, whatever. That, the way that we look, the way that a cat looks, the way that the tree looks, the way that anything around you looks, the way that the rains function, all of those things are there because he has put the function in those things to say, this is what you're going to operate as on this earth. That is God. So everything here is operating under the laws that God has pre-prescribed. -pre to say, this is how you're going to act. This is how you're going to move. Likewise, you are functioning in the way that God has put inside of you in terms of the coding. You can put it in the coding terms. In terms of the coding or in terms of the functioning or in terms of the ability that God has put inside of you. You actually function the way God wanted you to function relative to what he wanted you to do in terms of you being like him. Already, as I said, even in your natural state, you're moving like God already. Randia. <laughs> You know, the word he wants me to release is a bit, um, I won't say powerful, it's a bit scary. But in the way that he is creative and he has created all things around you, there is a place. And this, this is now where things can get, and that's where the spirit behind me is actually hovering above me. This is not going to be in scriptures. I don't think it is anyway. Maybe it is, maybe I haven't found it is yet. But there is a place where you, 
will actually physically operate as a god <laughs> um yeah as i said i started with the scriptures but the way that i'm gonna move away from scriptures you can actually kind of think that i make things up and it's that's up to you to to, to discern but there is a place in the function where you're going to operate as a god you in the way that god has operated in his godly state to create everything around you to create even you to function the way that you function now those likewise features are inside of you to also be creative to say for instance that we have created cars here on earth we have been given the knowledge the skills and the resources around us to create a car to, to get a, a car functioning that you do this this and that and the car moves planes skyscrapers whatever electrical devices are around you, even this phone that i'm speaking to you now this is man-made god did not make this this one that i'm speaking to you on this house that i'm under the cars that i've been in the tvs and what what god did not make this you we as men or you as a man because you're also a function of whatever man has created you as a man have created those things and that but that is creating in terms of the resources already around you and then you're just bringing all those things together to make something so it's not almost creating more than just making things that's why i shouldn't go in the spirit for this spiritually however spiritually you have the ability to create something from scratch to say that there isn't even a resource yet on huh. that there isn't even a resource as yet or to say that oh god almighty you know i can't actually speak these things <laughs> I'm not trying to be weird, but honestly, I can't speak it. It's it's impossible. It's actually impossible. Um, that's just almost like being God. God God is impossible. When you try to think about who God is, your mind or automatically finds to say, but that that's impossible. Who is God? Where does he come from? Where is his beginning? Where is his end? How is he God? What makes him God? how has he created everything around you what what were the original intent what was the original intent what are the original thoughts for him to create everything around him how did he do it and that's almost almost what i'm trying to do to describe you to say that you are supposed to become impossible even to yourself really okay well god to himself is not impossible he knows what he can do and that's actually something that i'm trying to develop inside of you to say that you should know function what you can do spiritually and I want you to start spiritually because when you sit in the spirit, remember Jesus, for instance, uh, the person that I spoke to said that this, this is a God. Even Paul said this is a God. Jesus walked on water. It's a story to some. To him, it was a reality. To say could raise people from the... I don't want to go too deep in scriptures, but as I said, this is the function that I've seen. It's written for you to read it, for everybody to read it. There is no, there's nothing hidden about this, this word on who Jesus was or who the Messiah was and who who he was here on this earth and how he was able to function in the way that God described him or God prescribed him or how God created him to function in terms of being like God or functioning as a God. That's why I started with Christ and that's why I also bring Paul a little bit to it to say that even the spirits and that's obviously things which are against God would actually look at God or look at Renasia, look at Paul and say this one is like God. Uh, the, the scripture in itself would actually go to say, Jesus I know, Paul I know, who are you? So there's actually spirits around Paul who would actually look at Paul and see that this man has got authority. This man functions as a God. This man must be God or must be God-like or his authority comes from God. That's how they actually describe Jesus to say that the things that he has done he could not do it and not unless and accept that he was from God. That's all good and well. That's a nice revelation to say that you're doing things that are reflective of God to say that God sent you. I'm not there to say that you're functioning as though God sent you. I'm saying that you are functioning the way that you are seen in the spiritual realm as being a God himself. To say when people see you, remember even Jesus said this, to say, if you have seen me, Hara, I'm not Jesus. I'm not saying that in the way that he said it, because when Jesus said this, these words, they had a completely different Erenambro, also Brandia, but God is going to allow me to say it in those terms nevertheless. 
I'm not trying to be blasphemous to my father in the spirit because it's only him who's allowing me to say these things anyway to begin with. Is anybody still there? Am I talking to myself? Just wave if you're still there or send a message to say I'm hearing or I'm listening or something because right now it kind of feels like I'm talking to myself. Um, but Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the father, which means if you've seen me, you've seen God. And he even further to say that no one has seen the father except me and no one can go to the father except through me. I know this, this sounds very religious to say, okay, now you're, you're going to religious and what, but there's a function towards that is behind that to say that there's a reason why he could say those things. You actually need to challenge his authority to say, are you sure that you're the only one to the Father? Are there no other ways? Can I not test out to see any other ways? You can kind of function around there to say, let him prove it. And he will prove it to say that what I actually said, I meant to say that I am God. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. If you function with me, you're functioning as if you're functioning as God. There is a purpose behind scriptures. So please don't take the scriptures very lightly because some of you do do that. Uh, but let me leave it there. I think I've said a lot and I've said too much anyway. Um, I'm just trying to deposit some things inside of you to see A, your feedback, and B, kind of to see how exactly you're going to be receiving this word um, around you being a God and around, around you functioning as a God. My spirit, man, is stretching and, and it's actually affecting my natural man. By the way, that, that is a part of the responsibility of moving in your godlike state. Even your natural things, your natural body will actually start to function the way God has put inside of you. Remember that on this earth, since sin came and since deception came and things, all these other things came, you, even your natural man, is not operating or moving in. Let me put this word immortality. Immortality. Immortality in itself is a spirit. Because I know I know a man of God who used to speak or preach on immortality. Um, but to say that he was able to access it was almost impossible in the way that he was speaking it. Immortality in itself is a spiritual thing. It's a spiritual function. I can't. I honestly cannot. Um, I have started something. Please... Give me your feedback in terms of what I've started now. Try and find out what it means to be like God. Please just read up on it. And however you can, just read up on it in the meantime. And then when I move forward, I can try and now connect with people to, to get things to get things interpreted from different points of view. To say, okay, this is actually what God is trying to say. It, 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 maybe it's a lot easier when you hear it from three or two or three different sources so that we can kind of confirm within each other to say, okay, perhaps this is what God is trying to say or perhaps this is what God is trying to make us do or make us see. Potentially, I think that's how I do. I, I don't mind speaking about God himself, even if even if I'm the only person on this earth who would carry this revelation to say that you are God. I wouldn't mind, but I would I would love to join other people and actually see what what kind of things that they have seen and what kind of things that they have heard. I'm going to end this video now. The next one that I'm going to do, I'm just going to pray in the spirit um, because I kind of can see that many people that are seeing me or watching me are kind of seeing me with the Rodoska. There's just somebody who's watching me who's doing things they're not supposed to be doing. So for their own safety and my own let me end this. My next video, I'm going to go live, but I'll be praying. Be blessed.